Once we've entered the basic hardware configuration, we have some basic project settings we want to take a look at. If we simply come to the configuration and double click on the processor, we'll notice that one of the default settings is most likely not the positions that we want to be. The first thing that we want is we definitely want the PLC to automatically start and run from power cycle. The second thing is the button for, to initialize your registers on cold start. In most applications, we don't want this to be checked. What this will do is any register that doesn't have an initial value in your variable editor table will get set to zero and everything that does have an initial value in that table will get set to that value. In most cases we don't want that to happen. So now that we've had that system set here the way we want it, we have to validate it and we go from there. The other thing that we need to look at in the drop down menu we can see that this is my PLC choice along with the firmware. Many times when you start a project from scratch the firmware will be different in the PLC so we either want to update that PLC choice for in this case for that processor I have firmwares all the way from 2.1 all the way up to 2.6. When I download they need to match. Typically if it's a new project we're going to want to use the uh, firmware updater and update it to the latest software and, and choose that for our PLC of choice. If you're going into an older processor and we don't need to mess with it, sometimes you have to go and downgrade this to make it match what's actually in the PLC. The other place that we need to go is under Tools, Project Settings, and there's a lot of good information inside of here. The Build Settings is one of the spots that I like to go to, and what we can do here is we can click this box for virtual connected mode. If we make a change to the processor when we're offline and we go back online, we can do a download changes without stopping the processor and stay online without having to re-download the project from scratch. The other thing that's very important is embedded data. Embedded data, we absolutely, in most cases, want to make sure that the upload information is checked. When we download to the project, in most cases, we want to be able to go on with a different PLC or PC and be able to upload that project and run with it. One of the nice things about the Schneider Electric upload information is not only does it have the PLC, but you can choose to have any comments that are on the project as well as animation tables. Animation tables are shown over here and they're simply uh, register editor tables to help you in debugging in the project. We will talk more about them later. But those are some pretty good spots that we look at. The other thing that is new in this system is we go to the common settings for the languages. And we have the implicit type conversion. In the past, we always had to make sure all of our data types match perfectly, words to ints and all that type of stuff. Now there are some implicit type conversions that will automatically convert without having the data match exactly. Those are some really nice little features to go forward to take a look at for your options. I'll say yes and go from there. Thank you.